Welcome aboard the Victoria of White, the newest ferry in the White Link fleet. Now, they've kindly invited me to revisit the site of my annual childhood summer holidays on the Isle of Wight. Given its new status as a UNESCO Biosphere Reserve, I'm keen to find out what, if anything, has changed. Since I'm never one to turn down the opportunity to get on my bike, I'm going to see the island in what I think is the best way possible, on two wheels. The Isle of Wight is really bike friendly. There's a well signposted cycle route that goes all the way around. It's about 109 kilometers. It's not too difficult, so there's something there for all levels. Don't kid yourself though, the island is far from flat. There's some pretty good hills, but on a day like today, look at the views you get. So every year as a child, I had to find a great green bush cricket. Listen to that sound. That is the soundtrack of the summer on the Isle of Wight for me. The sound of, of these crickets singing. Being a UNESCO Biosphere Reserve is a massive deal. It puts the Isle of Wight up there with some pretty impressive company. We're talking Uluru in Australia, Mount Kenya, Yellowstone National Park. And what it does, it recognises the Islanders' commitment to the environment. Islanders like Jamie, who works for the Wildlife Trust here at New Church. Look at the ponds, look at this. You've got plans for this landscape. Yeah, definitely. So one of the key things, perhaps the most exciting thing, is the introduction of beavers. The beaver offers so much, not only for environmental improvement, but also for flood defence and protection of property and everything else. Nature's great eco-engineer. Well, so yeah, they're a keystone they're... species. Exactly, they are the catalysts for the environment. Not only for aquatic species, but for all the associated species as well. Everything benefits. The beavers are certainly an exciting up and coming project, but down here on the south coast of the island, I'm meeting Stephen, the project officer with Forestry England, to find out about a reintroduction program that's already underway, that of the white-tailed eagles. Why is it important to release such an iconic bird here? In the well, Island? for one thing, yeah, this bird was lost from this part of the world because of human persecution. So in my view, it's our moral duty to restore this bird here. But also it's, it's an apex predator that's been lost. It's part, a key part of the ecosystem and it, it will inspire a generation of new conservationists. In days gone by, I would have been on a little campsite near Knighton, but with so many lovely cottages to rent on the island, I thought I'd spoil myself and stay here in Ventnor for the night. Over 50% of the Isle of Wight is designated as an area of outstanding natural beauty. And as you cycle along the South Coast Road, it's easy to see why. But here on the beaches near Compton Bay, there are beauties of a more prehistoric nature. One of my favorite things about the Isle of Wight is it's called Dinosaur Island by some, and that's because there's some really rich deposits of fossils, and in this case, dinosaur footprints. This is an iguanodon, one of those huge, great big reptiles walked along where this beach is now something like 128 million years ago. And there's plenty more all the way along there. Furthest west on the island are the iconic needles. Formed through coastal erosion, they must have been a welcome sight for many an ancient mariner returning back to the safety of the Dorset coast. Well, I've had a brilliant time on the island, revisited a lot of old childhood haunts and learned a lot of new stuff as well. But one last night, I'm going to treat myself at the George in Yarmouth. Time for a beer and a bite, and it's also rather convenient because the ferry back to the mainland is right next door. But I'm going to take the ferry from Fishbourne to Portsmouth instead, so I can catch up with some rare and furry residents. Cheers. Now there's one very famous resident of the island which used to be found all over the UK but is now restricted to very few locations and that is the red squirrel. The grey squirrel's never made it across the Solent. If you're very careful you can go to pretty much any of the woodlands on the island and sit still and be very patient and you might just get to meet one. And if you're very lucky they get quite close as well. Look at this.
Oh, well that's it, my cycle tour of the Diamond Isle draws to a close. I have seen some great wildlife, some stunning scenery. I've really enjoyed revisiting my childhood haunts and I can certainly see why it deserves its UNESCO status. But for now, all that remains is I'll catch my ferry.